Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today is just a bit of a rant on how innovation doesn't seem to be innovation anymore. Anytime that I uh, go to a legislative hearing to talk about right to repair, you will often hear the opposition talk about how this will stifle innovation, that technological innovation has been the pinnacle of our society for a very long time. Innovation is very important. Yet as time goes on, it seems like more and more companies are changing things without actually innovating or making things better, but they call it innovation. And this is just one of many things that has bothered me that many of you brought up in a recent video, which is that on YouTube, apparently they've changed it so you cannot sort by videos anymore in chronological order. If somebody made a video and you wanted to see what their oldest video was and their newest video was, it was fairly simple to just go to their page and then click a button and be able to do so. So you used to be able to arrange by popular, by oldest to newest, newest to oldest. Now you have recently uploaded and popular. So you can see the most popular video, you can see the most recently uploaded video, but you cannot sort by oldest to newest. YouTube also took away certain functionality when they changed YouTube Studio over from the classic YouTube Studio that was amazing a few years ago back to the new and highly bloated YouTube Studio that takes longer to load that just isn't as good for scrolling through comments and stuff like that as the old studio was. They used to give you the choice to use the old YouTube Studio or the new one, now they don't. The same way that you used to be able to have the choice to view somebody's oldest produced video without having to literally sit there and do this for 10 minutes, but now you actually do have to sit there and do this for 10 minutes to find their oldest video, which is highly annoying. Uh, the same way that they've done things like remove the dislike button. So now I have this little plugin over here so that I can see the YouTube dislikes when before I used to simply be able to see if people disliked a video by clicking on it. Instead of just being able to see it but when I click on it, I now have to have this plugin enabled or I'm not going to be able to see whether or not people dislike the video. This little plugin return YouTube dislike is awesome and I highly suggest that you all try it out so that you can actually see what people think of a video, which is something that makes complete sense on a video production platform. Another, which really kind of brought up the rant for this video, was the Dymo label printer. So I, my label printer after moving, it finally died. This thing has given me about seven years of loyal service. I really, I'm happy that my little label printer that I bought used has given me seven years of loyal service and needs to buy a new one. Now the Dymo 450 doesn't exist anymore. I use this for printing customer labels. So I needed a Dymo 550 because a 450 is not made anymore. So I'm checking it out on the site and I see that it only has three and a half stars. This thing used to have like five stars. I'm very curious why the rating is so low. So I scroll down here and it says total cost of ownership for this is unrealistically expensive because of the proprietary labels. Apparently you are not able to buy your own labels with this printer. It will only work with Dymo labels. So what they have introduced, their innovation is something called paper DRM. I can only use their model paper with this printer. I can't use my paper. And here's the thing. Here's the thing about Dymo. Their paper costs a lot more than normal paper for no good reason. Their paper costs a lot more than normal paper for no good reason. I am not printing out labels that I expect to be seen by people in the year 3000 of serious artwork. This label is printing out a ticket number and a customer name that I stick on a laptop that I throw away two days after I make it in black and white. I don't really care if I'm using the highest quality paper. And let's be real here, there's a lot of paper that's not even the original Dymo paper that's just as good as the Dymo paper. But even if it isn't as good, it's my fucking printer. I should be able to choose with goddamn in paper, I put my own fucking printer. But this is what we call innovation nowadays. We call innovation taking away the headphone jack on a device at the exact same time that we decide that we are going to make Bluetooth earbuds that are one at two hundred dollars disposable that you cannot replace the battery on that just so happens to die after a year. Innovation is no longer innovation. It's taking features and functionality away from people. It's changing shit for the sake of change. And a lot of the times, it's just about making more money off of the customer with no necessary improvement in the product at the detriment of the customer's own sovereignty and freedom. I really kind of miss the days when innovation meant we're going from the Zing MP3 encoder to the lame MP3 encoder with alt preset standard, or when we're going from lame encoder with alt preset standard to, you know, Vorbis encoding or, you know, Opus encoding. I miss the days when innovation meant we are going from, you know, like real video codec to X265. I miss the days when innovation meant we're going from 56K to DSL to Fios. 
like real innovation, when things actually got better with each generation, when you had more sovereignty, more freedom, better technology, and a better user experience as a result of things changing, rather than what we have now, where it just, it seems like, and again, I could just be talking out of my ass, it just seems like so many companies have run out of ideas on how to actually make things better, on how to actually improve the user experience, on how to actually make more money by making people happier. So it's just about taking away small pieces of freedom that you used to have and how you use your stuff. And it's kind of aggravating. It's kind of aggravating. And I think the thing that's most aggravating of all is that we've just kind of gotten used to it. People expect it. They don't really push back. They don't really say, I'm not going to use this anymore. They just take it. They just don't care. I saw what Daimo did with that. I bought a used one. Uh, Rolo actually reached out to me and they said that they were interested in sending me a label printer that works way better than this without any proprietary bullshit paper DRM. And I'm going to see if it works with the repair shopper. That's the software that we use. It did not list Rolo as a compatible list of the Dymo. And if it works, I'm going to return the used Dymo that I bought. And I'll uh, make a video saying that this is the label. This label printer does function with repair shoppers. So people who are curious will know. Um, I really do hope people at YouTube do decide to change this back again. Can anybody explain to me what is gained by making it more difficult to navigate a video platform so that you can see the videos that somebody created? Like, why is it bad for people to be able to see the evolution of a channel over time? You know, something I've talked about a lot here is I have videos up from when I was first trying to learn motherboard repair like 10 years ago. These videos suck. They are so effing bad. I'm using, I'm using like, I'm using something like 20 gauge wire as a jumper. And it's, it's just, they're bad. They're really, really bad motherboard repair videos. And I'm, I'm captain taping the wire onto the board. If I had any sense, I would delete this shit. But the reason I keep it up is because I want people to see the progress. I want people that watch this channel that think I can never do what Lewis does. I'm never going to be able to do that to see just how fucking horrible I was at my job and then see the progress and go, damn it. If that moron could figure it out, then so can I, because I know that that's inspiring. I know that when somebody sees you go from being absolute and utter shit at something to being good at it, that that's way more encouraging to people than just seeing that this person just, I don't know, just rolled out of bed and was good at their job. I know that that's encouraging. And I don't know, maybe I'm being petty here, but it just seems like that's being taken away when you take away a feature like that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. On the chair, we have Oreo the kitten. And on this side of the chair, we have Blackberry the kitten. Look at Blackberry the kitten. Isn't she cute? Isn't she cute? Isn't she cute? She's a good girl. She's a good girl. That's right. She's a good kitty. Oh, it's a good girl. Good kitty. Anyway, see you in the next video. Bye now.